Hi, I'm Father Joseph Mary, and welcome back to A Simple Word. On September 30th, 2015, the state of Georgia executed Kelly Gissendaner for the 1997 murder of her husband, Douglas. While she was in prison, Kelly accepted Christianity and she demonstrated the fruits of an authentic conversion. She earned a theology certificate from Emory University and she brought God's message of love and of hope to inmates in desperate situations, some of whom had even attempted suicide. As her execution date drew nearer, a group of former inmates, prison workers, and even Pope Francis pleaded to the state for clemency. Even Kelly's adult children who had been who had lost their father because of her crimes, they pleaded for mercy. But all of the appeals were denied, and Kelly was eventually executed. Today's gospel challenges our understanding of justice and of mercy. This Sunday, we come to the end of the liturgical year, the celebration of Christ the King. The church proclaims the end of the year of grace 2019. The following Sunday, a new liturgical year will begin with Advent. All the colors will change from green to violet. And this Sunday in Luke's Gospel, Jesus has been crucified between two criminals. And this was deliberate. It was purposely staged to humiliate Jesus in front of the crowd, to rank him with robbers. Remember that crucifixion was a brutal, torturous means of humiliating the enemies of the Roman Empire. It was customary for the condemned to carry both his cross and a placard proclaiming the reason for his guilt. This placard was then nailed to the cross. We often see in a, an abbreviated form of this placard on the crucifixes in our homes and our churches, the letters I-N-R-I. They're the first four letters of the four Latin words, Jesus Nazarenus Rex Iudeorum, Jesus Christ, King of the Jews. This was the reason for his guilt, that he claimed to be king. As we come to the scene of the crucifixion, we see all sorts of reactions to Jesus. The rulers are mocking him. The soldiers are jeering. There's even a group of pious women whose common practice was to attend crucifixions and provide the condemned a, a drink of drugged wine to deaden the pain. And finally, there are the two criminals crucified with Jesus. Now both Matthew and Mark's gospel tell us that these two criminals also mocked and abused Jesus. But as they hung on the cross over many long, painful hours, something in the heart of one of these men began to change. Pious legend tells us that this man's name was Dismas. There are many, many stories told in the history about this man, but perhaps uh, one of the most beautiful recounts that when the Holy Family was attacked by robbers during their flight to Egypt, they were saved by the son of the chief robber. The infant Jesus was to him so beautiful and innocent that the boy couldn't bear to think of harming him. Instead, he secretly helped the Holy Family to escape and he asked, O oh, most blessed of children, if ever there come a time for having mercy on me, please remember me and forget not this hour. It's a pretty story. Regardless of the truth of such stories, the heart of Dismas experienced a profound conversion. A conversion that happened amidst suffering. Suffering with his eyes fixed on Jesus crucified. Finally, his heart overwhelmed by grace he cries out Jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom and what is the amazing reply of Jesus Christ amen I say to you today you will be with me in paradise what 
This man hasn't done anything to prove he's worth it. He's going to be dead soon. How can he hope to make up for all the wrongs he's committed, to atone for his crimes? Where's justice? This man's unworthy of paradise. Yet Jesus says, today, you'll be with me in paradise. That's the point. Nothing we do in this life, no matter how great, ever justifies us before God. Mercy is a gift. We can never earn it. We can only abandon ourselves to it. There's a story told of a woman who once approached Napoleon Bonaparte, seeking pardon for her condemned son. Napoleon replied that the young man had deserted the military on two separate occasions, and justice demanded his death. The mother, persisting, replied, but I'm not asking for justice, I'm pleading for mercy. But your son, replied Napoleon, he doesn't deserve mercy. The mother answered, if he deserved it, it wouldn't be mercy. In the crucified Christ, the heart of God is revealed to the world. And before Jesus crucified, the hearts of men are exposed. The crowds stand by, indifferent. The rulers mock, the soldiers jeer and gamble. But the sinner, conscious of his sin, prays for mercy. An undeserved, unwarranted mercy he receives. And so he comes to know the truth about God. That God is merciful love. As we end this liturgical year, let's stand in the truth before Christ the King, acknowledging the truth about who we are, so that we can come to know fully the truth about God. I'm Father Joseph Mary. Thanks for listening to A Simple Word. If you found this reflection helpful, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next week.